Hi, my name's Bob Grinier and I'm a volunteer with the Martin Fleischmann Memorial Project. Thank you for joining me. I am announcing the first preprint of Bin Zhen Huang et al's paper, which will accompany his oral presentation at this year's ICCF number 25, which will be held between the 27th and 31st of August 2023. The purpose of publishing this is to get it out to you guys and uh, ask you to go through it with a fine tooth comb and see if there are any errors and things that need to be considered for a more full and accurate paper, which it is intended that it will be offered for publication in a major journal. So the title of the paper is Water Can Trigger Nuclear Reaction to Produce Energy and Anomalous Gas Is and Bin asked me very kindly if I would help uh, with this since it was a proposal I made a couple of years ago that led to the current work and essentially what happened was they were producing it would seem cavitation driven excess heat up to 4.34 and this is equivalent to the kind of peak output from a heat pump in some of these reactors and they wanted to understand what was going on and in their work they had done some SEM and EDX analysis and they had found various elements like uh, an abundance of carbon and oxygen, some phosphorus, sulfur, some calcium and iron in the damaged areas of the pipes that were affected and they sought some advice on based on a presentation I made where I predicted that they would see uh, neon and an abundance of carbon being synthesized and I showed the pathway to achieve that by fusion of hydrogen and oxygen and so forth. So over the last uh, year or two they have done a huge body of work and when I made my original presentation I didn't follow my own rules back then which I presented in my poster session at ICCF 22 in 2019 which was it's the most energetic reaction uh, because it's trying to fit it into a small box and so I proposed that they would see neon 21 over neon 22 however I was not following my own guidelines but that didn't matter because in the process of their study they found no synthesis of neon 20 neon 21 but they did see neon 22 which is the most likely outcome from the understanding that I have shared and the precursor to that is oxygen 17 so the reaction is a proton represented here as 1h1 plus an electron plus an antineutrino plus uh, 16 oxygen the most abundant oxygen isotope goes through some process through to 17 oxygen okay because the overall process is uh, if taken place at one time is exothermic in principle that can occur and there is no gamma quanta in this process if you synthesize a neutron first and then put the neutron into the oxygen you have two problems one is that you need to provide energy to make the neutron form and secondly uh, when the neutron goes into the oxygen 16 it will produce a gamma so that really precludes that approach anyhow once you have your 17 oxygen and I've argued this before so I will zoom in so you can see it a little clearer so that is the reaction there okay and then once you have the 17 oxygens they fuse and then fission so it's essentially an exchange reaction and they produce a 12 carbon and 22 neon and this is the most likely outcome according to my understanding now what I shared at my presentation in the CZ last year is that oxygen is paramagnetic and it is the thing that the um, clusters like to bind to and they appear to want to grab spin nuclei of which 
all of the hydrogen isotopes are spin but 1H is the one that's most abundant in this instance and it goes on to synthesize spin isotopes of 17 oxygen which is the only isotope of oxygen that is spin and the product of these clusters when they do their interaction with potentially trillions of nuclei is to produce nuclei that are non-spin and stable okay so this fits the logic uh, quite nicely and then what they observed is uh, the production of CO2 and what they also found was that neon and the other gases only appeared to be formed in reactors other than this abnormal one which had some sort of resonant issue going on it was going hot and cold um, that produced excess heat so the reactors that seem to produce for in, in this case the heavy oxygen O16 O17 was the reactors that had producing excess heat and that is the same for heavy carbon dioxide so C12 O16 O17 and the same for uh, heavy water not HDO in this case H2O17 so the heavy oxygen isotope there so you have the excess heat generating reactors okay so their conclusion is cavitation may induce low energy nuclear reaction Lena through implosion of water vapor bubbles using various techniques in the previous study we found that the heat exchange process in multiple pipe heat exchanger produces peculiar excess heat and nuclear transmutation recently we have tested another eight reactors and found that they also produce non-condensable gas we suspected that neon 22 and co2 may exist and is from nuclear reaction of water 14 gas samples were collected from eight reactors to perform mass spectrometry carefully using various methods two different methods for identification of co2 were employed while three different methods are employed for neon 22 all the results confirm that neon 22 and co2 do exist in Lena gas samples i.e those that produced excess heat in answering the question how neon 22 and co2 is produced in water we conjecture a possible nuclear reaction mechanism and find out that c12 and isotope o17 may be the intermediate they possibly produced some other isotope compounds in Lena gas using isotope ratio analysis we find that they are h2o17 heavy oxygen water isotope o2 o16 o17 and isotope co2 c12 o16 o17 since the chances of getting all the present results is so remote this may lead to a new research topic in nuclear science and energy technology if true energy production from water is a dream of mankind and it seems possible and it calls for much more scientific research and technology development from different areas that is the conclusion i think they've done some fantastic work here essentially what i'm asking here is could you guys do your best to establish if there are any errors here any things we're majorly overlooking and let us know so that we may produce the best paper possible moving forward so thank you very much for your time and i will see you in the next video